Here it is guys, Nick2025 here, back with another Epic Gamer video, and the introduction to my retrospective series. Now, basically, if you don't know what a retrospective is, it's basically just sharing my thoughts and opinions on said whatever I want to talk about. Basically like a podcast, but you're judging something in your own opinion and your own view, and again, anything I say in this video, do not take it wrong. Do not, you can have your own opinion about what you feel about the multiplayer, zombies, anything I say during this is, it's perfectly fine with you. Um, so, I guess, let's just jump into it. I, this is new to me, so I've never really done something like this for multiplayer, but I'm excited to see how it works. So, multiplayer. This year's multiplayer is definitely a bit different, I'd say. The reason why is because... Well, there's a lot to explain you know basically if you've ever played modern warfare 2019 there's a lot of aspects from that game and it basically makes it just just like it you know it's it's just like modern warfare uh Treyarch did a really good job i'd say but they also did a bad job this year too there's a lot of flaws but uh we're not going to be judging that on in terms of like uh glitches and bugs and issues we're just going to be looking at the multiplayer itself and give it my own opinion and judge out of a 10 out of 10 rating you know whatever i want to say so let's start off with the core modes as you can see there is quite a bit to choose from if you look at the playlist selection quick play is basically everyone's go-to there's core and hardcore uh, basically core is just your normal mode and hardcore is basically just a more realistic kind of feel uh, it's not like you shoot them a couple times and they die you shoot them once and they die basically unless you're that one unlucky person and you you know get hit markers so I've had that happen before several times but let's talk about the core modes of multiplayer now as you can see we have the standard team deathmatch hardpoint domination kill confirmed and if you look down we got control free for all uh, and search and destroy uh, basically your normal modes and how you want to say it in each game there's always every single game there's at least something like this your basic ones uh, but Treyarch wanted to switch it up this year uh, there's quite a bit of uh, playlists to choose from uh, as you can see there's quite a bit of new ones that you're probably unfamiliar with like example VIP escort VIP escort is basically just a protect the president mode uh, they I guess they thought of something different for this year and it was actually really good I've only played this about once well actually more than a couple times during the beta uh, but that was during the beta I have not played it in the actual game yet uh, I should probably be playing it because it's really fun actually I just don't play it enough to actually enjoy it so yeah VIP escort is basically just that mode where it's like protect the president where you know you just uh, there's one there's one VIP uh, basically or president on either side and your objective is to protect the president and exfil him uh, basically what this mode is uh, how you win um, if you look at the intel how you win it's basically just uh, you, you can uh, you know defend him while exfilling or you can kill the other team and win either way works the only thing that the VIP actually has is a suppressed pistol with a couple of other attachments too and uh, I think one smoke grenade and then a UAV so basically he has a lot of stuff um, there's no score streaks for the other people trying to protect you uh, it's basically like if you had the bomb in search and destroy and your teammate was bad and they had the bomb then you'd either defend them or let them die but in this case you have to let them survive because if the VIP dies you lose the game or lose that round specifically there's a few rounds it switches every once in a while so yeah that's basically what VIP escort is now the new they also added let's just say they added a lot of new ones this year okay combined arms domination basically what it is it is a uh, let's see it is a 12v12 mode where it's on a bigger map and it is just normal domination except there's more points there's a b c d and e i believe um so they added two more points than your typical a b and c uh so instead of three there is 
five. So that's quite a bit, and I think it's interesting how they actually added more because I was not expecting it. Uh, I did play this during the beta. A lot of these I did play during the beta. Uh, I haven't played it in the normal game because I've just been playing the, the you know, face-off, if you can see down there, which I will get to in a moment. So, yeah, Combined Arms Domination is basically just domination, um, but on a bigger map with more teammates. And it's only on certain maps. It's not on every map. Again, it's on the bigger maps. Crossroads, Armada, Miami, and Cartel. Both, they were 6v6 maps. I think Cartel and Miami are 6v6 maps, but I'm not entirely sure because uh, I haven't played in a while. So, then we have Combined Arms Assault. This is basically... I think just like hard point, I don't think I've actually played the assault one, um, but there is a hard point one. Uh, I don't think I, I'm not quite sure what the, the assault one is, I'm not going to lie. It says fight for control of the zones, each momentum and increase uh, your team's capture speed by eliminating enemies and capturing objectives, achieve victory by pushing into enemy territory and capturing all zones. So. I guess basically just doing that, what it says. Um, I'm not going to lie, I haven't played this, but maybe it'll be a learning experience for me too. Uh, now I can't really give a judge on it, but you get the point. And it's also on the bigger maps as well. And then of course there's also Hardpoint, which I just explained as well. Uh, so yeah, now the game mode I like to play and multiplayer mainly is Face Off. Face Off is actually really fun. I'm pretty sure this was in Modern Warfare, but it was only for like a limited time uh, for a special event or something. Basically what it is, it is gunfight maps, which I'll also get to if you don't know, if you're not familiar with it actually. Uh, it's basically just a 3v3 on gunfight maps. So instead of your typical 6v6, it's a 3v3 on smaller compact maps. Uh, no score streaks, it's just weapons. There's only a couple maps, there's only four, but I think later this season, they are actually adding, um, they are actually adding another one, which is great, because I'm, a, I'm very excited. I love playing face-off, so I'm excited to see what they have in store for the next map, and I assume they'll just add one each season. Uh, I assume that's their plan. And Apocalypse 24-7, we will also get to that. Uh, it'll, it's also on the out, like, uh, as soon as we go out, you'll be able to see it. Uh, basically, this is a new map. Uh, they, you should know, uh, pretty self-explanatory here. It's just 24-7 of the same map over and over with some featuring modes, you know, some fan favorites basically. So we got Team Deathmatch, Domination, Kill Confirmed, and Hardpoint on this map. And uh, that's basically uh, all the playlists that you can get. Everything else is also the same in Core. The only thing, or Hardcore, the only thing that isn't the same is you don't have the combined arms. It's basically just Hardcore Team Deathmatch, Domination, Kill Confirmed, Free For All, Search and Destroy. Uh, there is a 24-7 playlist for Nuketown. Everybody knows it, so I'm not going to explain it. Uh, Hardcore face-off as well. I like playing it. It's kind of fast-paced and everything, but it's also really rage-inducing So I just suggest not playing it unless you're that kind of guy who wants to play hardcore and then Apocalypse 24-7, but it's also hardcore so out here you can see there's a different selection of playlists and there's some new ones that you might not be familiar with so let's talk about them the rapid fire mosh pit is new and there are some other ones that have been rotating out and in um to the the mix and playlist the rapid fire mosh pit is basically just a fast paced mode on certain maps basically the smaller ones and the more fun ones that everyone loves and enjoys uh the spy plane is a uh, is constant sweep so instead of you having to have this spy plane score streak it's just a comp constant sweep it goes over back and forth all 24 7. uh the ghost perk is restricted and lobby timers are reduced so that's basically what it is. It's just a fast-paced mode. It's actually really fun. I've only played it a couple times, but what can I, uh, what I can say from it is it's really fun. Apocalypse 24/7 also is in the mix. Yeah, again, I already explained it. Gun game was added actually this season. You can read the description if you would like. Basically, if you're not familiar with gun game, gun game is basically just. Uh, there's about 20 weapons, and every single kill you get, you'll switch to either a better or worse weapon. Um, you'll start with a pistol, and then you'll end with a knife. Uh, it basically just cycles in between um, a bunch of weapon classes and everything. 
that Trey or Cap set up. Uh, Nuketown 24-7 is back in the rotation. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. Just 24-7 Nuketown. Everyone is familiar with that, which I'm pretty sure this actually might be a permanent playlist because so far I have not seen Nuketown not be on the playlist selection. Snipers only mosh pit, also pretty self-explanatory. It's snipers only. Lethal lethals and tacticals are restricted according to the intel and score streak weapons restricted so that means that some score streaks are restricted the thing that i find dumb about this mode is the fact that you can still have chopper gunners um which he really makes no sense sure it's basically just a sniper rifle in the sky if you really think about it except it's like a turret form so uh yeah but i wouldn't really call it a sniper so i honestly feel like they should restrict that but it's whatever now gunfight again if you're not familiar with gunfight if you have ever played modern warfare 2019 uh it's basically just the smaller maps that i told you about in face off um Ubon, icbm kgb game show and also nuketown 84 was added to this mix basically it's just 2v2 on these small maps every two rounds you'll switch weapons um it's not like team deathmatch or domination and stuff that's basically what this is it's just a 2v2 different weapons test your luck that's all i gotta say so yeah prop hunt now prop hunt everyone should be familiar with prop hunt is definitely the one thing that everyone enjoys uh teams alternate between hiding as props and seeking out props and hunters so basically it if you don't again if you're not familiar with the mode uh prop hunt is basically just one team is props the other team is hunters and you only get certain props, you get a certain number of changes, you can add decoys, blah, blah, blah. Basically, just hide as a prop. Prop hunt. Pretty self-explanatory. The other new mode that was added this year was actually Fireteam Dirty Bomb, which I will be talking about this in Zombies as well, because Fireteam Dirty Bomb is basically just, like, yeah, let's see. Um, basically, whew, how do I say, what, 24 versus 24? Uh, or no, not 24v24. It's kind of weird. Uh, basically just 20v20 mode. Um, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 20v20 mode on bigger maps, uh, newer maps. What you do is you're basically, uh, let's see. There's basically, hmm, how do I say? There's basically bombs around the map. A, B, C, D, and E, I think. Um, or maybe E is not a thing. But there is bombs around the map. You have to kill people and collect uranium. And you have to um, dispose it into the bomb. And then it'll... Oh, there goes my thing. You just have to put it into the bomb and it'll explode. You'll get points for it. You'll also get points for killing people. It's... Yeah. You can also read the intel if you want. Now, let's move on. Oh, we're almost done with the modes, actually. Versus Bots is new this year. What Versus Bots is, it's basically just... Uh, how do I say? If you've ever played custom games before and added bots to your thing to practice or just for fun, try out new stuff, your weapons and stuff, then that's basically what this is. Um, except I don't think you can really create a class, um, but you can change the bot difficulty. You can only change it to these three modes, and you can only change it to certain maps. So it's kind of boring, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of basic, because why would you have everything set up here when you could set up your own game in custom games but if you were lazy and you didn't want to then this is the way to go practice but i don't think you can create any classes oh which is a major downgrade so yeah custom games probably the most self-explanatory one here besides nuketown gun game and prop hunt uh basically what it is it's just you know what i explained you can play with bots customize your class use score streaks use anything you want basically so basically all custom games is uh well that was the uh core modes now let's move on to the weapons see you in a second and we're back welcome to the weapons category of call of duty black ops cold war now we are basically going to be talking about what weapons are in the mode and how broken they are uh, this also has to do with the skill based matchmaking which i'm going to talk about too uh like i said in my teaser uh, some of these things that I'm talking about I didn't mention in my uh, little teaser for my new series but that's only because uh, there's too much to go over and kind of 
kind of is lazy. Anyway, let's talk about what weapons we have this year. Now, if you're familiar to the Black Ops 1 playstyle and weapons, then you'll be very familiar to these new ones. If you if you know and love Call of Duty Black Ops 1 like I do, then you'll understand. This is basically your commando, the XM4. Basically your commando from Black Ops 1, but I don't want to like, you know, compare them, uh, especially if there's a new player watching to Cold War and they're just trying to see whatever. So, yes, uh, if you're ever watching, then this is your commando, but it's an XM4. Uh, next weapon we have is the AK-47, one of the most infamous guns, I must say. It is really popular. A lot of people use it. It's really good, but it's also really bad. It's trying to be balanced and stuff, and don't mind what it says down there. That's just compared to one of my weapon classes that I'm using, so... Yeah, uh, let's move on. The Krig-6, a new weapon, it's basically like the Galil, um, and I think the Galil actually might be added this year, uh, but we're not done yet. I'll explain in a second. The QBZ-83, uh, a lot of, uh, Black Ops 2 vibes to this, also Black Ops 1 vibe to, um, yeah. The FFAR, which is basically the FAMAS of your... Call of Duty Black Ops 1 experience, so yeah, not too much to say about this, and uh, yeah, so the Groza is actually a Battle Pass weapon, I actually don't know what happens if you don't claim it from the Battle Pass, because I've always gotten the weapons from the Battle Pass, so far it is Season 2 of Cold War, and I mean, I've collected every DLC weapon so far, uh, yeah, but the Battle Pass I'll also talk to you about later. Uh, this goes along with the seasons and stuff. So yeah, but the Groza is a pretty good weapon. Pretty balanced, but it's also pretty powerful too. Uh, the recoil is definitely there. Then we got the new weapon, which was just added this season's Battle Pass, Season 2, which basically also is like a Galil kind of thing. It's literally just a Galil. A lot of people have been using this. It's a really good AR, very powerful. Uh, as you can see, the firepower is up um compared to my other weapon uh that's because my other weapon is an smg and it's a little weaker but yeah you get the point so the far 83 is basically just like your galil uh of the game but it's also like a krig 6 which is very confusing to me when i actually saw it and was trying to review things so yeah but let's move on the next weapon or the next weapon class we have is the submachine guns now Everyone should be, you know, like, everyone should know how bad these are. As you can see, the weapon I have is the Milano right below it. But this is the MP5. Um, a lot of people understand the MP5. Pretty self-explanatory from there. Uh, yeah. The Milano is the weapon I'm using. Uh, I'm using a blueprint for it, which is basically your way of cheating through the weapons without having to level them up. It'll basically just give you attachments, a cool mini camo or uh, thing for it, blah, blah, blah what it is the ak-74u basically just a miniature ak but an smg form um i'm not like a gun expert about this whole thing so you can probably tell by that um and up next we get the ksp now for some reason this smg lo it looks good right well it is except the problem is it's um it's a burst it is a burst weapon and nobody really knows why but it is a burst weapon. Uh, up next we get the Bullfrog. This is basically just your PP Bison of uh, games. You know, it's been in a lot of games, especially Modern Warfare. The Bison has always been that one gun, but now it's renamed to the Bullfrog. Just a little model different. Uh, yeah, so let's move on. And yeah, they added a Mac 10 last season. This was also from the Battle Pass. You can get for free. The Mac 10 is basically like those mini toys you would see at like the dollar store or something, and uh, you would just pick up and buy, play with. You know, blah blah. It would make that weird annoying sound or whatever. If I could play it, I would, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to. Um, yeah, but the Mac 10 is basically just that. Uh, but you know, realistic, real life, blah blah blah. This SMG is probably one of the strongest ones in my opinion. Uh, in zombies, not so much multiplayer. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely up there. The speed is there too. The firepower is just insane. Uh, you can add a lot of attachments and everything too. It's 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 crazy. A lot of people have a specific one that they like to run in Warzone every time I play Warzone actually. So yeah. Up next, we actually have this one from Season 2. Uh, I unfortunately have not used this yet, but I've seen people use it, and it is very powerful. It's, I think, less powerful than the MAC-10, 
but still just as good in terms of accuracy and precision. So yeah, this is the LC10, uh, Mac 10 LC10. Yeah, I know they like to use a lot of numbers and especially the 10 for now. But uh, I don't think we needed another SMG considering the fact that we got one last season too. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Again, you don't have to, you know, agree with me. But I really don't think that we needed another SMG this season, considering the fact that Treyarch kind of screwed up last season and made the Mac-10 really OP. Um, up next, the TAC Rifles. Uh, a lot of people should be familiar with some of these weapons. Uh, the Type 63, basically your SKS, uh, but in an old kind of modern day sort of feel but you know in like uh, like 20 year 20 to 30 years ago basically because this is set in the 80s at the moment so this is basically that uh the m16 a lot of people should definitely be familiar with this this has always been uh one another iconic weapon next to the ak um and another iconic weapon is coming up in a second too it's also it, it's a burst rifle um tact rifles are kind of and Call of Duty games are either burst or tap fires. The Type 63 is tap fire. The burst is also, or you know, a burst. The AUG is also very familiar. I'm so happy that this came back this year. The AUG has always been one of my favorite weapons. It has the original sight from Black Ops 1. I'm glad this is back uh, in all its glory. So I really enjoy using the AUG. If you can't tell, uh, this one's also another burst weapon. Um, right next to the M16, and yeah, that's all we gotta say about it. The DMR, uh, basically your M14 from Black Ops 1 and 2, uh, it also appeared in Black Ops 3 and a lot of other games too. Not just from the Black Ops series, but I'm going off of the Black Ops series because that's, you know, what it is. So, yeah, uh, that's all it is. I know that this is a very broken weapon in terms of Warzone. It is really strong, really fast. If you have a fast trigger finger, you can also put rapid fire on it to make it much stronger and more effective. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's move on now. The LMGs. Uh, one of these should be very familiar. The other one should be two, or actually all of these are very familiar if you're a Black Ops 1 player or a Black Ops 2 player. So, the Stoner 63, this is also in Black Ops 1 and a lot of other games too. Um, I'm just going off of Black Ops games because this is a Black Ops game. I don't want to talk about other games too much, but I will be comparing this to Modern Warfare, but not too much. Uh, I'm not going to say that, oh, it's bad. It's basically just a copy of Modern Warfare. I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm basically just saying that it is kind of like Modern Warfare in a way. Uh, the setup is basically like Modern Warfare, just a little bit different, you know, so, yeah. Sony 63 basically an LMG. What I remember, this was used to be an AR in Black Ops 1, correct me, I think, because it literally was an AR, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't tried looking it up, but I'm pretty sure it was an AR back in Black Ops 1. But now it's an, it's an LMG, and it's really good, so... Yeah, the RPD, again, should be familiar to Black Ops 2 players, if you're one of those guys. Uh, this was definitely one of the better weapons, especially in Zombies. Uh, this was an iconic weapon in Zombies. People would always get this from the box or the hammer, which if they ever add that back to Black Ops Cold War, I'd be very surprised. Uh, we don't get any DLC LMGs too often, and even when we do, they're not too good. People use them for like a week, and then that's it. Um, so yeah, the RPD. Uh, next up is the M60. This also is very familiar to Black Ops 1 and other games too. Basically just that one LMG that's really strong, uh, but also really slow. So, yeah. Next up is the sniper rifle selections. Now we don't have too much, but I think we are getting one later this season. Um, I think confirmed by Treyarch actually, but the Pellington uh, is basically one. Of, the Pellington is a good sniper. Uh, it's kind of like the side sniper of this year, I'd say. It's not your uh, DSR or whatever you want to call it. It's uh, just the, the, bull, the ballista basically, but it seems like a DSR. It's still really good, one shots almost every single time. Uh, a little weak, but also really powerful at the same time. Uh, yeah. The Tundra, now if you remember the Tundra, this was actually from Black Ops 1 as well, but I don't think it was called the LW3, or maybe it was, but this is uh, the weapon from Black Ops 1. A little different, little, uh, yeah, but this is basically that sniper that everyone likes to use for this year. This is that one sniper that everyone always uses, um, your go-to in terms of snipers. So, 
yeah and now the m82 the barrett 50 cal i don't even have to say anything about this weapon it's good when it can be but it's also really bad at the same time so let's not talk about it now next selection we have is secondaries we have the 1911, pretty basic weapon. I'm going to try to zoom through this because I don't want to talk all about weapons. Next up is the Magnum, also like a revolver, basically, typical one. The Diamati is basically just like the uh, uh, the Rafika, basically, uh, from the other Treyarch and uh, Modern Warfare games, mainly seen in Modern Warfare as dualies. And you can you can put the dually attachment on here, the dual wield. Um, that's basically what the Diamati is. The Diamati is just a mini burst pistol. Uh, it's been in the past few COD games, so yeah. Shotguns are back to secondaries this year. I think they were secondaries in Black Ops 1 and 2, I believe. And then Black Ops 3, they made them primaries. And then Black Ops 4, they were back to secondaries, I believe. Or maybe they were primaries, I'm not sure. Um, kind of hard to remember because I haven't played the game in a while. But uh, yeah, so the Hauer, you know basically just like your Remington of this year, uh, the Gallo, the Spaz 12, of course, the Street Sweeper, um, Luke, if, you, if you're watching, there's your street, uh, street Sweeper, um, I'll probably let my mom know if she's watching this video too, to go to this specific part in the video, just so he can see the Street Sweeper, because he is in love with the weapon, apparently. Um, the next up we got launchers, the Sigma 2, uh, this basically can shoot down, uh, score streaks like UAVs, chopper gunners, blah, 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 uh, stuff like that. Next one is the RPG, I don't even need to explain this one, this is, yeah. Alright, so then we got the melee class, uh, we have your basic knife, uh, there's a lot of these that were added during the season last season basically uh the two the wakazashi and the sledgehammer so the sledgehammer was added you know pretty straightforward just the sledgehammer uh the wakazashi is basically just like a miniature katana if you want to say it's really uh well known um in certain places around the world which is really cool i really enjoyed using this when i was going for camos and stuff really nice uh this season they added a machete and i think they're going to be adding more i think they're adding a shovel this season um, but the machete is currently available at right now, and yes, these are all free, you just have to do challenges. Um, in the special weapons, we have the M79, also known as the Thumper, basically that one grenade launcher that, you know, does nothing, but it's also really good at the same time. But, uh, yeah, now, let's move on to the next section. I'll see you in a second. Alright, we're here. We're going to be looking at a couple things in the weapons uh, classes. Uh, we are not going to be looking at score streaks because there's not really too much to go over. There's, well, there is quite a bit, and I don't want to have to go over everything just for a split second. Um, but we are going to be looking at the accessories, the finishing moves, and gestures, vehicles, basically. So, again, from Modern Warfare 2019, if you played it, they added something very cool. Uh, they added gestures. Basically, you could do stuff with your hand. You can weapon inspect. It's pretty, pretty cool, actually. Uh, gives you a little animation for the weapons. It's been in the past few COD games, but this COD game, um, along with last year for Modern Warfare 2019, they added a watch selection. Now you're probably wondering why would that be of use? Well, it's not. It's just something cool to have. Basically, just cosmetic. Uh, just like Fortnite in a you know in a sense so it just doesn't really do much it does tell real time and i think it also tells military time because i know that is different too if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong again i i'm not a nerd at this stuff so yeah but you got some cool looking watches put on this one actually uh has a cool effect to it it shows what level you are and your prestige icon um so yeah basically what it is uh this one's also the same thing just a different color again cosmetic only it's not too important uh the wellington safari i think was added this season it says season two so yeah uh but it's pretty cool this one i really like i've been using a lot it's basically a um you know your fitbit of the 80s if you want to say um you could basically just track your steps with it love using it in zombies it resets i think when you hit a million so if you hit a million then yeah uh, as you can see i've taken 362,712 steps in multiplayer so it's quite a bit i know i know but 
you get the point. All right, next up, we're going to be looking at the, at the vehicle customs. We're not even going to go over everything. Basically, what you could do is you could put skins on. It'll give you a cool little outfit. You could put horns on, and you could put mixtapes. I'm not going to go over them. You can see what they are. Um, they have different music tracks that they'll play randomly. Some of them are copyrighted, too, so be careful. Uh, but you got the Wake Runner. You got the Gunboat, Raft, Hind, Dirt Bike. T72, the Fab, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a snowmobile, light truck, and sedan, which was added this season. Basically, all have the same selection, put on different stuff on them, customized, you know. Next up, we have finishing moves. Basically, what they are is if you go behind someone, you could do a special attack instead of just killing them like normal. Um, example, this one, this one's really brutal. Uh, this one's from the Battle Pass, so... <laughs> Basically just a quick little move that you can do, like a, you know, like, finish him. I like using this one. This is from this season. I haven't been able to do it yet, but I'm excited when I can do it. It's like a little roll. So that's basically what it does. And then in terms of gestures, like I said, Modern Warfare 2019, basically you do these little call-outs. You know, you can say hello, blah, blah, blah. Check your watch. If you look right there, it's grayed out um over there because it's the weapon inspect and you cannot change that it's always going to be there uh the bundle locker is basically just sh it just shows you how much you've bought uh and how many things you bought from the shop uh or the store so not too much there all right next up is our operators and then the battle pass and then we're done we are at the operators section so basically the operators uh is just like your normal special uh, specialists from Black Ops 3 and 4, except they don't have any special abilities, but you can put cool outfits on them and choose whatever character you want. Uh, so these are the two basic ones. There's two teams. Uh, you'd have to watch the campaign, uh, or not watch it, but do the campaign in order to understand this kind of story between the two rivals. Uh, basically, this team is good, the other team is bad. That's really all you gotta know. So, you know, you get these two skins, uh, Hunter and Song, uh, and then, of course, you can unlock them over time. Uh, these other operators like Woods and you got Park. Don't want to spoil anything, but you'll understand soon. See, I have different outfits, and as you can see, the pictures aren't like them. So, like, especially for Adler. Adler is definitely not uh, the normal Adler that you would see. Next up is Baker, uh, and then we have Sims. Uh, it shows what they originate from and what they work for. As you can see, mine's like kind of like this Vampire Slayer, basically Blade if you've ever seen it uh, from the Marvel Universe. Uh, yeah. Then we got stuff that you can buy from the store, some operators from the store. I'm not going to go over the store or any of the outfits or anything. I'm just going to, you know, talk about the operators and stuff. Yeah, Bulldozer, pretty cool. He's He looks like a bad guy, but he's a good guy, apparently. Uh, Xenia, you know, not... Uh, too much or yeah Z Zena I'm sorry not Zenya <laughs> uh, then we have Maxis she was just added she is from the zombies universe which is actually really cool because now you can play as her we've been waiting to play as her for years and decades actually um, but now we can finally play as her and it's not as cool as I thought it would be even though I haven't played as her yet I'm sure I'll figure it out uh, next up we have the Warsaw Pact uh, which is basically we got Powers and Vargas as your starting people. Uh, they definitely look like bad guys. Uh, so not much to go off. Uh, Stitch, he is uh, an operator from last season's Battle Pass. As you can see, I have a cool prison outfit for him. I went with a prison theme last season. A lot of stuff added to Warzone. That's why. Uh, and some storyline related issues too. So, yeah. Then we have people like Beck. You can earn him in Zombies. Uh, Pretty cool, like his uh, style. Uh, I, I used to run him, but then I switched to my favorite operator of this side, which is Port Nova. I really like her. I don't know what's so special about her. She's not really too cool, doesn't have too many cool outfits. I mean, there's a lot of cool ones that she has. Uh, one of them actually looks like Seraph from Black Ops 3 and 4, which I think she has the same voice actor, if you notice. Uh, she just kind of has that Russian accent, and... Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Uh, Naga is a season two operator, just like Stitch. He, you know, is basically on this side. So 
pretty self-explanatory. Garcia is one. Uh, not really too much to say about him. Don't think he has anything to do with the storyline. And then we have Stone. You'll understand who this guy is. Um, he has a different name, or she, whoever you choose, in the campaign. That's all we got to say. And then we have the CDL packs, which you can buy any team, um, both sides, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I guess I will see you in the Battle Pass section, and then there's one little thing I have to talk about towards the end, and I'll give my review. See you in a second. Alright, now we're at the Battle Pass section. Now, again, this is from, this is, we're currently in Season 2 at the moment. M moment? <laughs> yeah. Moment. We are currently in Season 2 at the moment. So, what is the battle pass the battle pass if you don't know what it is basically just all cosmetic nothing grants you competitive advantage the battle pass just basically gives you stuff that you wouldn't normally unlock just by playing the game there is some free stuff like it gives you an operator some free xp all this stuff uh there is some free things but you, you know how that goes uh, you don't get too much from it so yeah you also get the weapons from the battle pass the ones that are from the season uh so yeah you get these cool animated calling cards too a lot of stuff the finishing move with the roll thing that i told you about basically this is all it is it's just a bunch of blueprints calling cards watches vehicle skins vehicle customizations there's another outfit for port nova that i'm excited to get actually so that's pretty cool um and yeah it's literally all it is it's nothing too special nothing too great i guess it's just cosmetic only um i don't want to talk about it but apparently there's only going to be six seasons in cold war just like in modern warfare i don't know if there's actually a season seven yet in modern warfare if they're even going to do that i don't even know what they're going to do after the cold war's life cycle to be honest so i guess we'll just figure it out but uh yeah as you can see all this stuff yeah, uh, all the way up to tier 100. You get a cool outfit for the tier one guy. So basically, just like your, you know, tier 100 from Fortnite uh, in a cooler perspective in a way. So yeah, now we have one more thing to talk about, and then we will move on to my full review and my rating for multiplayer this year. See you in a second. The final thing I wanted to talk about in terms of multiplayer is actually the Weapon Mastery camos. So one thing I showed on my teaser. So, yeah. The Mastery camos this year is basically just your every, every game thing. If you don't know what a Mastery camo is, it's basically you do these challenges in order to get camos on your weapon. And once you complete them all, you'll get gold. Now, if you do this on... Uh, every single AR for example if you do it on every single weapon class uh, it'll you get the point I'll explain it in a second so it says unlock gold camo for five assault rifles in multiplayer doesn't matter which ones it can be DLC or it could be the ones that they give you uh, and then you'll unlock diamond only for that section though you will only unlock it for the ARs not the SMGs not the shotguns not anything like that that's basically what you'll unlock it for, just the ARs. Now, if you get diamond on every weapon, which means get gold on every single weapon in the game, uh, then you will get access to the, basically the Ultra match Mastery Camo, which is DM Ultra, also known as Dark Matter Ultra. If you're familiar with Dark Matter, then you'll know what I'm talking about. They actually changed it up a bit this year. Uh, Dark Matter Ultra is really cool. Um, it's not nothing too special, nothing too vibrant. Uh, zombies will definitely have some better camos. The only thing that's not better is the gold. The gold of this kind of reminds me of Black Ops 1 uh, again. And then Diamond also reminds me of just Black Ops 2 and 4. Um, and then DM Ultra is like Dark Matter Ultra from Black Ops 3 and 4. So yeah, it's just DM Ultra. But, uh, yeah, now let's go on to our review on what we think of Black Ops Cold War multiplayer. See you in another second. No total, t total, the final total I give for Black Ops Cold War in terms of multiplayer modes, everything. I think that this year's is a 7 out of 10. 
Uh, I think this year did really good in terms of what they did for the multiplayer. The only complaint I have is the skill-based matchmaking, which I didn't talk about because I know people are probably going to get butt hurt on when I think about it. Uh, I'm not going to just sit here and complain about it, even though I said I would talk about it. Basically, what the skill-based matchmaking is, it's just it's pretty self-explanatory. Skill-based matchmaking. Uh, you just matchmake into games with your similar skill level, if not better or worse. Uh, I don't know how that works, but it does. Um, ever since Fortnite added it, it's always been in a Call of Duty game since, uh, which I think they added it back in 2019, and the Modern Warfare had skill-based matchmaking, and uh, so did Cold War. We've all been complaining, but sadly, I don't think Call of Duty will stop with the skill-based matchmaking. There's only skill-based matchmaking and multiplayer. Of course, the campaign doesn't happen, but you can change the difficulty level to make it like skill-based matchmaking to your skill level. That's the point of regular recruit, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so I give Black Ops Cold War a 7 out of 10 rating. Um, this has been kind of fun. It's probably going to be a long video, which I was not happy about because I didn't want it to be too long but I also didn't want it to be too short either because I know there's not much to talk about in terms of multiplayer unless I talked about the maps and stuff and actually played the game mode um, so yeah and there's also league play but I'm not getting into league play league play is basically just your competitive mode which I really don't see the point of skill based matchmaking in league play if we're just in normal modes if we have league play uh, so yeah it's basically all I gotta complain about for skill based matchmaking but yes I give Call of Duty Cold War a 7 out of 10 and, or at least multiplayer uh, so I guess I'll see you tomorrow with the first retrospective of zombies I'm not gonna be going over any maps I will be going over D Machine the first zombies map of this game very soon and I'll have a release date probably in the next video for the zombies video in zombies what we're just going to be talking about we're going to be talking about the mastery camo we're going to be talking about the upgrades and stuff and that's about it then we'll talk about the modes that they have so yeah i guess uh i'll see you then but uh without further ado this is my review and retrospective on cold wars multiplayer i'll talk to you all later peace